Hi there, and welcome back. In this video, I want to show you how you can use my OpenAI Explorer extension for SketchUp um, as a coding companion for SketchUp Ruby. Right there is a piece of code. I can copy it into my coding environment, which in my case here is the Ruby code editor, and I can execute it, and I can work with it. All right, I'll show you more in a second how you can set this up and how you can use it for this very purpose. Don't forget to check out my book, Architectural Design with SketchUp. It covers all of these topics and makes for a great desk reference. You can find it where books are sold. There's also a link to it on my site, sketchupfordesign.com, together with lots of additional tutorials and news. Okay, let's get started. So when I code anything, <laughs> I'm very much a copy paste coder, uh, where I go to the web and I search up for a function and then I enter that function into my coding environment right here. And um, uh, I'm going to make modifications and, and build my code. <laughs> I can't remember everything that is in all these languages. And so, so in any case, um, that's been my MO. But now with AI, actually, we can uh, have another way to um, help us code. And that is, of course, being implemented in all kinds of coding environments. But you can actually do it right here in SketchUp as well if you use something like my Ruby code editor um, or for that matter, if you are just simply using the Ruby console right there, you can generate code uh, even without knowing how to code <laughs> in my OpenAI Explorer extension and then copy it, paste it in here and execute it. Let's give this a quick try. I'm just going to use this little snippet right there. I'm going to paste it, enter, and it executes the code. Now, obviously, the Ruby co uh, console is not a great um, editor by any stretch. Uh, it uh, just executes code. So you will most probably will want to use this with some kind of an editor. And there's a bunch of them out there, minus the Ruby code editor extension that you can find in uh, SketchUp's extension warehouse. And um, yeah, and install it in, in you know uh, any of the desktop versions of, of SketchUp, and then code away. And some of you, uh, many of you, actually have done that uh, in the past. And now there's another way to basically write that code. Okay, so let me show you how you can set this up. So first of all, I'm assuming that you got your um, editing environment all set up one way or another. Next, you're going to need the OpenAI Explorer extension. Um, that one is not in the extension warehouse. Um, that one is on my website, alexschreier.net. And the link is in the description. And you can find it there um, with a, a ton of more information. I also posted a bunch of videos about it. Uh, so you can look at those as to how to install this. And then once you have it installed, it shows up under the extensions menu right here, open AI Explorer Experimental, and then there's dialogue and settings and so on and so forth. So in order to get started, let's quickly look at the settings here. Um, the settings for this particular you know, purpose uh, have to be customized a little bit, but um, not much actually from the default that it ships with. So first, first thing you got to do is up here, you got to um, write a system message that um, instructs it to generate only only uh, Ruby code. So I said generate only valid uh, SketchUp Ruby code. Actually, um, make sure you put the word SketchUp in there, otherwise you get just plain Ruby, which is not useful for us. Um, in any case, experiment with a system message, uh, whatever works for you. You can say uh, don't uh, include methods or whatever you know modifier you want to um, add to this. This will then apply to every single interaction that you have in that chat window and uh, makes makes this process very, very easy. Um, next, of course, you need a, a chat completion model. Right now I'm using the 4.0, the Omni model, but you can use 3.5 Turbo just as well. It's cheaper <laughs> for most things and uh, often it gives, gives fairly similar results for, for this purpose. <clears throat> but um, anyways, the, the model goes right in here. Then tokens has to do with the length of the answer. I usually like to keep creativity a pretty low here because otherwise I'm going to get all kinds of weird answers that may not even be executable. So, so that's 
what temperature does. Anyways, and then down here, this time we don't want to execute code. We don't want to just automatically generate something in SketchUp, which may or may not work. We actually want to create code so that we can, you know, use our <laughs> coding skills to check the code and then apply it and then and then run it and write something basically. So in any case, execute no in this case. Um, next one, submit model view with request and the, the following quality setting has to do with the Omni model. If you use the 4.0 model, you can use that. For the most part, you most probably won't need it. But if you want to submit the view of your model, so basically all you see here on the screen with that request, set that to yes. There may be some cases where you want the AI to identify what's on the screen so that it can create code that works with what's on the screen. So make sure you, um, you know, consider that uh, when, when you enable this or um, by default leave it disabled. So no is perfectly fine over here. Then down here, submit number of prompts. This has to do with the uh, history, of course, um, if you want uh, it not to remember what you said in previous prompts, leave it as one. If you want to have some kind of a history, go up from there. I'm just going to leave it as one right now um, because that's fine. Okay, then you say okay, and then you open up the um, OpenAI Explorer chat window basically right here. And then since we've told it to only generate Ruby code, you can ask for anything. So now if I say draw a box, it will generate Ruby code and apply my uh, system message and do that to draw a box. Now, of course, it didn't uh, execute that code because we didn't want that. But now I can copy that code, move over into my coding environment, paste it. And then, of course, uh, I can read through it and make corrections. Look at this here. It actually starts an operation. That's quite nice. Gives it an undo, although everything is within an undo here anyways. Um, push, pull, all of those kind of things. All right, so let me just delete that. Hit play, and I got that. And then, of course, this is where you can make adjustments. So in my case here, the, the push pull went downward because the face um, is in a certain orientation. So if I now go in and change base face oops, and say reverse with the exclamation mark, it does the push pull upward because it first reverses the face and then push pulls into the positive direction. Could have also added a minus here. So in any case, so this is a good, good example for how you can generate code to edit it. Um, no automatic execution whatsoever. <laughs> and um, you can check things and then run things. So let me show you a few other things that you can do here. You can um, say open oops, a website and it will give you basically the code to open a website. It knows that. Um, uh, display a message. Let's see if that comes up right here. UI message box. There you go. Well, we can just test that one out too. Let me replace everything right here. And I'm just going to there. And there's my message box. Perfect. So um, it pretty much knows the entire um, SketchUp Ruby API and will give you, for the most part, fairly valid code. You may need to you know, make some adjustments there, here and there, but, but that works. Now, the other stuff is also, um, sometimes I forget just some of the basics. <laughs> uh, do an if, then else. There we go. <clears throat> Let's see if that comes up. If, else, and there you go. Nice reminder for the syntax. Um, you can also do some more advanced stuff. Uh, create an HTTP request. If you want to get something from a website, for example, that's really useful, which is basically what I'm doing right here, right now. Um, but in any case, uh, now here it'll tell me that I have to add these um, uh, uh, classes to the top here, basically the, the respective ones, the modules actually. And then <clears throat> I can define the URL. I can um, make the request and work with whatever comes back. 
Now you see here, sometimes it says um, puts response body. Uh, so anything, you know, just, just as a reminder, if I do, if I have something like this here and I uh, execute that in my um, Ruby code editor, it, it won't show me anything because basically the puts command put stuff here. <laughs> so now if I execute it, of course, it went into the Ruby console. So for some things, you need to have the console open um, to get the uh, result. So actually, one thing, let me just see if it does it. Would be nice if it does. So, so one thing could be, for example, you may want to list the vertices of the selection. List all vertices of the selected faces um, and actually I'm going to say unique Let's see if it does that I'm going to say go and now it generates the code for that I hope fingers crossed right there oops something didn't work Paste it here. Okay, so now I'm guessing, yeah, it gives it a puts command. So I'm going to have to actually, I can I can do it right here from um, the code editor. I can say show Ruby console. Then I'm going to use my CLS command to clear that. And then I'm just going to execute that. There you go. And it lists my vertices with coordinates out like this here. So yeah, so there's, there's quite a bit of um, things you can do with this just simply by asking, <laughs> which is great. Um, and, uh, and then, of course, you know, you have the code, you can modify the code and change things and so on and so forth. Um, you can actually copy paste the code in here and ask a question about it as well. Or actually, one thing that you can do is in my settings for OpenAI Explorer, I'm going to switch number of prompts to three which means it submits the last one. And I can now say, can you do that in fewer lines? Right there. Not sure if it can. Oh yeah, that's a few, <laughs> a few less. So you can actually um, work with the memory function, which basically, again, you know, uh, will submit one, two, and three with a current request and then um, considers what happened beforehand. So yeah, so there's all kinds of really interesting stuff you can do. It's pretty simple to implement. It's a really nice way to also learn um, SketchUp coding and of course uh, Ruby coding and you can you know use it as a, as a memory aid at any point because we all need that. <laughs> Alrighty. Okay, so I hope this was helpful. Um, let me know in the comments if you have any, uh, any questions about this. But uh, I hope this helps you create some nice code in SketchUp Ruby. <laughs>